Welcome back to Accounting Simplified. We're continuing on our journey on how to make accounting real easy and understandable for you. First eight chapters, we've gone through our accounting cycle and we pretty much went through it as a service business. So like if we were a photographer. Now we're gonna go through the accounting cycle again, but instead of being a photographer, we're gonna go through it as a merchandising business. So when we talk about that, it moves us into chapter nine. We're gonna talk about how do you journalize purchases using a purchases journal? Well, before we can get into that a little bit, we need to start talking a little bit about what purchase merchandising is. When you purchase merchandise, you're actually going to use an account called purchases. Purchases is technically an expense account. Uh, it's a cost account, technically. Uh, and you'll notice that a, a debit will increase it and a credit will be there. Anytime it says we purchased merchandise, we are going to be debiting purchases. We'll talk about the crediting and purchases as we go on later in the trimester. Then we purchase on account. So this chapter talks a lot about how do you purchase merchandise on account. Now, could a business purchase merchandise with cash? Yeah, but it's actually not the wisest thing to do. If you can purchase merchandise on account, that gives you days to use the merchandise, to basically sell the merchandise so that you can pay cash for it. So we're gonna be talking about purchasing merchandise on account. There's that on account, we see purchase on account or bought on account. We know that that's a liability because we know that we have a bill to pay later on. So therefore it's an accounts payable, whomever it was sits on the right-hand side of the accounting equation. Since it sits on the right-hand side of the accounting equation, it is increased with the credit. When we pay it, it's a decrease to the debit. So in, unlike the first chapter, which were first eight chapters, we used the general journal the whole time. Now we're not going to use the general journal the whole time, but rather we're gonna use different journals. We use these different journals because these are specific to transactions that happen regularly. If you think about like a Target, a Best Buy, um, a Hy-Vee, a, a Cub Foods, any of those places that have it, they're gonna be purchasing merchandise pretty regularly. So therefore they're gonna be using what's called a purchases journal. And a purchases journal is a very simplistic form. It's very easy. You can see it has your date, has your account, has your accounts, uh, has your accounts uh, credited here, has your purchase number, has your post rep, and has your one column. Now notice it has one column. So everything that we have in this one column, it's a purchase debit accounts payable credit. So basically everything that we're gonna have here, it's gonna be one number. Beautiful thing about the purchase journal is our debits are going to always equal our credits. Now, the one thing that you want to make note of is here is our accounts payable. Whatever is our accounts payable, that description is going to go into the accounts credited. So whomever we bought our merchandise from account, that's the name of the company we're going to put there. So our source documents, and again, we talk about always having that paper trail. Our source document is going to be a purchase invoice. You can kind of see right here how it all looks here. The biggest thing that you're gonna notice when you hit the transactions is you're gonna notice that it has a letter P or it'll say purchase invoice. Here's a cool little trick. Every time it says P or purchase invoice, it'll oftentimes say P as your source document at the end of your transaction. You gotta know, hey, red flag, I'm gonna use that purchase journal. So when we purchase merchandise on account, so here's a transaction that we're likely gonna see. It's gonna be November 2nd, purchase merchandise on account from Crown Distributing, $2,039, purchase invoice number 83. Again, we might see something that says P83, that's fine here. So basically what's gonna happen is how my, how my transaction and my journal is gonna look. I'm gonna put my date to my transaction. In this case, it was November 2nd. Okay, I'm gonna put that in my transaction right here. Uh, I'm gonna put my, who am I crediting it to? Well, my accounts payable is gonna to go to Crown Distributing. It's purchase invoice number 83. 83 is right here, I'm gonna bring that down. And my amount that I'm gonna do is 2,039. There is, you need, to, you need to realize something here. This right here is a debit and a credit. You have to realize that this is a debit and a credit. Even though it's one number, it still represents a debit and a credit. So we go through our transactions, there's your T accounts for you. And again, just kind of what I just talked about. You walk it through there. Again, the biggest thing that you gotta realize is this, is this accounts payable credit is explained here in the accounts credit. This crown, crown distributing is going to that accounts payable credit. So at the end of the time, this is real simple here. So we've gone through all the transactions, we'll post them. Chapter nine has a nice like five, six of them for you to do. You then need to total and rule the purchases journal. When you total and rule the purchases journal, it's very, very simple. You're gonna put on the bottom, you're gonna to put totals, you're gonna to put the date of the, at the end of the month or when the journal is done. 
total it. You're going to put totals, and then you're going to add them up. Here's the beautiful thing. You don't have to worry about your debits equaling your credits, because as long as your math is correct, your debits will equal your credits in that purchase of journal, because there's only one column, and it's kind of a nice little thing there. So there's your transaction steps there as I kind of step out of the way, as I just kind of explained. Again, single line says that you've added, double line means that you have verified and proved. Okay, so as we take a look at this now, we talk a little bit when you're done with this, and this is kind of what a completed what a completed purchases journal will look like. Couple things for you, we will be asking you to post. I know it's everybody's favorite, but remember, you do need to do that. Couple things that we'll point out here. Number one, as you're up in here on this one, um, that when you post it, we go over here, right? We're gonna take the date of the transaction. So we're gonna take the date of the transaction, which is over here. We're gonna bring it over to the respectful ledger, okay? Then we're going to take what ledger it is. Now we're going to use now different from previous, different from previous, your post reference is not going to be nine. Your post reference will be P9, P for purchases journal. Okay. A lot of people will just put nine here. It's got to be P9 for your purchase journal. Then obviously we're going to take it. Now in this case, what we're doing here in this situation, we are posting to the accounts payable subsidiary letter, ledger of Herman. So it's a credit here. It's a credit here. It's going to be a credit over here. That's why it's there. And then we post that credit and then we just bring it back and we verify it like so. Again, this is just a review of your posting process. Okay. Then at the end, so after we've posted all of these individually, at the end, what we have to do next is we have to then total, and we, we should have done this already. We total them up, right? Totals like we've talked about before. Total them up, verify them up. Now we're going to have to post this one number into two spots, and that's the tricky part. This one number goes to two parts. It goes to the purchases journal, the purchases ledger, rather, as a debit, because it says it right there, and it also goes to the accounts payable controlling ledger as a credit. Same number goes two spots, and you can kind of see how we post it out here, and this one right here I'm posting over to the accounts payable I then come back, now this is where it gets a little tricky, is I'm gonna put in parentheses down here, that 2110. Then after I go and post to my, then after I go and post to my, I repeat the same process here, I repost it to my accounts, to my purchases, okay, and you can see I kind of skipped that and I didn't do that here, but for sake of time, you're gonna post it here. Once you've done that, then you come back up here and you can kind of see right in here, that's when you're gonna have this on here. Don't, now here's the thing, remember I'm posting. Don't bulk fill, don't pass go, don't put any number back in the post reference columns or at the bottom of this until it is completely done. If you do, you will create headaches for yourself and it's gonna be a mess, okay? I know it's not efficient, I know it's not effective, I know you can probably do it faster, but you have to do it this way or else you're going to have a massive, massive headache. And we don't want that. Okay, hope this helps. Uh, let me know if there's anything that I can do. If you like this video, please remember to click subscribe and turn on the notifications and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you.